In a world of terrifying creatures, being small means facing danger at every turn. If you were a small animal, the late Cretaceous would have been an awful time to be around. For a youngster, every day is a struggle to stay alive. Their only chance is to keep out of trouble and grow up fast. If you're a young dinosaur, every mega herbivore in the environment wants to crush you. Dinosaurs develop advanced tools to survive, astonishing on the outside and on the inside. And now, 65 million years on, cutting-edge imaging technology will peel back skin, muscles and bones to reveal the secrets of nature's greatest success story. The largest dinosaurs grow as tall as a six-story building and weigh 50 tons or more. No land animal today even comes close. The jaws of a T-Rex can leave a bite mark over a meter long and its 30 centimeter teeth can penetrate deep into flesh. But every dinosaur, no matter how big or powerful, begins life very small. Oklahoma, 110 million years ago. A herd of Sauroposeidon dinosaurs are on the move. We're talking about an animal that's probably 80 or 90 feet long, and about 40 feet of that was just neck. So when it stuck its neck straight up, it could probably reach about 60 feet up in the air. These leviathans are making a journey to nesting sites they've used for generations and developing inside them are hundreds of eggs. They're the future of a species that will be around for 15 million years, more than 75 times longer than humans have been on Earth. Yet each egg is no larger than a cantaloupe melon. I think it's a very beautiful idea that you have this little egg that's surprisingly small, and out of it comes a baby sore Poseidon that's about the size of a rabbit and in two or three decades, it's gonna be a 50-ton adult. But why does this huge animal have such small eggs? Sauroposeidon eggs, like all eggs, are honeycombed, with tiny pores to let oxygen in and carbon dioxide out. Bigger eggs need more air holes, but if they get too big, the shell collapses. That's why even today, no bird lays a larger egg than an ostrich, which weighs just over a kilogram. Each female lays about 500 eggs a season. The moment an egg hatches marks the beginning of a race for survival a race that virtually all of them will lose. Being a hatchling, you don't have horns, you don't have plates, you don't, you don't have any kind of armor on the body. Practically anything could gobble it up. Thousands of defenseless hatchlings are let loose into a world of fierce predators. It's a brutal way to raise a family. Sauropods were just trying to flood the environment with babies, just in the hopes that a few survive. In the Cretaceous period, plant eaters face vicious killers. And none has a worse reputation than Tyrannosaurus rex, possibly the largest land predator that has ever lived. T-Rex is sort of the quintessential monster. A dinosaur with an attitude. A Tyrannosaurus rex can grow to five and a half meters tall and 12 meters long with jaws designed to tear meat to shreds. Its reputation for violence and terror is unmatched. But an infant T-Rex comes into the world better protected than most. If you say Tyrannosaurus rex, I think of gentleness. I think of superb motherhood and a struggle to raise one's chicks. The dreaded Tyrannosaurus rex, it turns out, is one of the most nurturing of all dinosaur parents. 
it means taking care of the eggs, sticking around the nest, defending the nest, and keeping traffic, track of its progress. Tyrannosaurus rex means tyrant lizard king. And this beast rules a world where physical traits more than intelligence determine winners and losers. But T-Rex has both superb biomechanics and by dinosaur standards, a sharp intellect. It was the result of many, many millions of years of specialization for large body size, for focus on prey, for sensory apparatus, and for the ability to dispatch a large herbivore. With things like Tyrannosaurus rex, you have bigger brains, you have the option for more complex behaviors, especially when it comes to parental care. For three months, an adult delicately guards the nest to ensure the survival of their youngsters and the continuation of their genes. You've got to have somebody that's very, very attentive when these little things hatch. Inside the egg, the embryo breathes in oxygen and exhales carbon dioxide. The CO2 dissolves in fluid, making carbonic acid, which will slowly weaken the shell. Before long, a meter-long T-Rex chick breaks free. You can imagine T-Rex helping its young out of the shell, even with those big, giant jaws. The hatchling is tiny compared to its gigantic parents, and it's immediately under threat. Tyrannosaurus rex, when we think about it, we tend to think of the big adult because that's the skeletons that we think, that we see. But we know that they didn't hatch that way. Once those eggs hatch, we've got an animal that's maybe, you know, three feet long, maybe weighs about five, five to eight pounds. Comparing that to the adults, which might weigh as much as seven tons and be 40 feet in length, you know, how is this animal gonna be careful to not step on these little little beasts, if, uh, uh, let alone try to protect them and try to make sure that they're going to be cared for. There's nothing fearsome about them. Sure, maybe someday they'll become a fearsome animal, but at that time they're just a meatball on legs. Wherever this T-Rex looks, he stares danger in the face. There were crocodiles, medium, large, to gigantic that could could plop down, swallow baby T-Rexes like maraschino cherries. Clearly, a young T-Rex is very susceptible to be eaten by just about everybody else who's around who likes to eat meat. And danger isn't limited to the ground. Sometimes it dives out of the sky. Quetzalcoatlus, a 180 kilogram flying carnivorous reptile circles waiting for the right moment to strike. Quetzalcoatlus would make all other animals in the late Cretaceous stare. With a 42-foot wingspan, they could shut out the sun. One tool that makes this flying reptile so effective is a highly advanced eyeball. Its eyes are built like a hawk's and are able to see with four times the clarity of a human eye and with a retina over 10 centimeters wide containing over a billion light receptors. This is a reptile that sees the world in high definition. There probably weren't many animals in the Cretaceous that would dare to try to grab a baby Tyrannosaurus rex. Quetzalcoatlus could probably manage it. You see a stork on the Nile today eating a baby crocodile. And you can imagine in your mind Quetzalcoatlus eating a baby Tyrannosaur 65 million years ago. I never know how well Tyrannosaurus could count, but I imagine mom would be a little bit perplexed when suddenly she was down to five instead of six, and there was no sign of where it had gone. For a baby Tyrannosaurus rex, danger lurks everywhere. But at least he has a fighting chance. For infant Soro Poseidon, it's a very different story. They are born defenseless and alone. 
you want to have intensive parental care, you can only take care of a limited number of offspring. If you want to have lots of offspring, you have to have little or no parental care. And sauropods took that route. From birth, Soro Poseidon is in a race for survival. For every 3,000 hatchlings, only one will make it to adulthood. And to become that one survivor, it must fend for itself for years. For this future giant, there's just one rule, grow or die. When we look at sauropod track sites, where we have tracks of hundreds of individuals all together, there's a curious thing. These big groups of sauropods always include only the adults and the animals down to about one third of full size. Growing up alone means growing up in constant danger. So think about a juvenile sore Poseidon that's the size of a pony or a horse. It has no sharp teeth, no plates, no spikes, no horns, no armor. It's not even very fast. And so what would happen to those juvenile sore Poseidons if they were faced by a pack of Deinonychus? Well, they would die. And Soro Poseidon navigates a world of hungry predators. When you start off coming, coming out of the egg and you're less than, say, two feet long and, and you're in, an, in a world full of predators that are loving to crunch on you, then you need to get big fairly quickly. The future seems bleak for this dinosaur. With its life under constant threat, how will it survive? Tyrannosaurus rex, a skull one and a half meters long, up to 60 serrated teeth, able to cover five meters in a single stride. This is one of the biggest carnivorous dinosaurs ever to walk the earth. T-Rex has bone crushing teeth. They're huge. They have two or three or four times the strength for the body size of any other meat eater. But a T-Rex is born into a world of enemies. And survival for this Goliath is never guaranteed. Herbivores are not dummies. They'll try to remove the dangerous elements in a preemptive strike. If you're a baby Tyrannosaur, every mega herbivore in the environment wants to crush you. Even the Triceratops, with its tiny brain, is aware of the T-Rex's potential menace, knowing that one day this tiny T-Rex chick will grow into a menacing monster, easily able to attack and defeat this plant eater. But maybe their worst enemy is a bit closer to home. Probably the greatest danger to a baby T-Rex is another T-Rex, the family from over the hill. Because Darwinian calculus tells you, the predator, to eliminate your competition, other predators, whenever you can. Male lions defend their cubs against rivals who see their offspring as future competition for food and mates. So it's likely that an intelligent predator like T-Rex would do the same. Compared to prehistoric plant eaters, its cerebrum, the part of the brain associated with strategy, is huge. So is the cerebellum, which controls muscle function. This is an animal that can plan and execute a devastating attack. It's a behavior hardwired into the brain. If you're trying to increase your evolutionary advantage, the best thing you can do is get more offspring into the future generation. And one of the best ways you can do that is to take better care of the offspring that you produce. Laying eggs nearly depletes the female. She needs nourishment to stay strong. And nourishment means meat. While she searches for her next meal, the male stays behind to guard the nest. Luckily, 
A Tyrannosaurus rex on the hunt is guided by some of the keenest sensors in the Cretaceous. Its eyesight would actually have been very, very good. The eyes of a T-Rex are huge, the size of cricket balls. A large retina collects more light and more visual information so they can clearly see prey from as far away as six kilometers. Critically, both eyes face forwards and their line of sight overlaps. So each eye looks at the same object from a slightly different angle. That means T-Rex can experience the world in 3D. There's very little in the environment of T-Rex uh, that would escape its attention. For the T-Rex, hungry after months of growing her eggs, making a kill may mean the difference between life and death. Ankylosaurus is a herbivore, but it's built like a tank, covered in steel-like armor. T-Rex's 3D vision ensures the reptile stands out from the background. T-Rex is impressive and it's powerful, but compared to an ankylosaur, it's relatively lightly built. Protective plates made of bone and cartilage cover this lumbering creature from head to tail. Light but extremely strong, the hide of Ankylosaurus is built like a bulletproof vest. And most importantly, Ankylosaurus is armed with a deadly weapon, a bony club. If that club were to connect into the skull of the T-Rex or into the shin and foot of the T-Rex, it would shatter those bones. I think that one good blow by the tail club would be enough to deter this Tyrannosaurus. Ankylosaurus are plant eaters, but they're designed to kill. Even a Tyrannosaurus rex would struggle to bring one down. T-Rex has a refined array of sensors, including an acute sense of smell that should lead it straight to a meal. Behind the nostrils are large cavernous chambers lined with sheets of sensory tissue able to detect odors. The olfactory bulbs transmit that information back to the brain. One of the big surprises was the size of the olfactory bulbs, part of the brain associated with processing information about smells in the environment. To increase the number of odor detectors, the area containing sensory tissue is designed like a radiator. A T-Rex could pick up even the slightest scent of meat and from a long distance. T-Rex had a sense of smell equivalent to 100 bloodhounds all duct taped together. They certainly had the largest olfactory lobe of any animal living or extinct on this planet. This is a vital tool for a hunter. From a substantial distance, a T-Rex can hone in on prey or pick up their hatchling's distinct scent. And there's something else unusual about a T-Rex's nose. The nostrils are a huge 25 centimeters apart. Which means T-Rex can smell in stereo. It can triangulate an odor and pinpoint its exact source. T-Rex could walk into a crowded auditorium and in a few seconds identify every single person and creature by its own idiosyncratic odors. This female, desperate to eat, picks up the scent of a meal. But it's the scent of an animal that even the strongest Tyrannosaurus prefers not to tackle. That's the most dangerous challenge that any big carnivore ever faced was the swinging head of Triceratops. It's like a gigantic white rhinoceros on steroids. At eight meters long and three meters tall, a fully grown Triceratops can reach six tons in weight. If there's an animal whose scent would frighten a T-Rex, it's Triceratops. T-Rex is well aware of the risks. Its cerebrum has information stored from previous encounters. It knows the danger ahead.
Overpowering a Triceratops means tackling a beast with meter-long horns covered in rock-hard keratin, and a body protected by a bony shield. But ensuring the survival of her genes for another generation would be worth the fight. One could imagine that the conflict between Tyrannosaurus and Triceratops may have been one of the greatest combats that nature has ever had. And this well-protected herbivore is everywhere. In fact, in the late Cretaceous, Triceratops outnumbered Tyrannosaurus 10 to 1. Their success is down to one reason. A single thrust of the brow horn could penetrate right into the cardiac chamber or the lungs. If you're going to put a meter-long horn into a chest cavity of a T-Rex, the chance of you doing some damage are pretty great. Tyrannosaurus rex is stabbed in the eye. The key element for any predator is to go in, make the kill, get what they need, and do it without injuring themselves. For a carnivorous predator, losing an eye could be fatal. Back at the nest, the chicks are guarded only by the male. Over him, a Quetzalcoatlus senses blood. On the ground, one parent is down and the other faces starvation. For a vulnerable baby T-Rex, the situation couldn't get much worse. Soro Poseidon is the tallest land animal of all time. At 17 meters high and 30 meters long, it would dwarf any living creature today. But despite these mammoth proportions, its brain is tiny, weighing just over 100 grams. The brain size of Sauropocyte would probably be about the size of a cheeseburger. Probably had the smallest brain size to body size of any big animal that's ever lived. Big, dumb, brute. A Sauropocyton's brain is a thousand times smaller than its body, just an eighth of the brain capacity of a T-Rex, and its cerebrum, where strategic thinking takes place, is barely developed. I mean, these guys were, frankly, dumb as a fence post. Soro Poseidon does almost everything by instinct, including rearing, or more accurately, not rearing its children. It may seem cruel to just dig a hole and leave your eggs in one drawing, but it's a very effective means of reproduction if you can afford to make lots of babies. We know that the sauropods were not taking care of the newly hatched babies. Uh, we don't find the newly hatched babies with the adults. Scientists believe Sauroposeidon's gargantuan size makes incubating eggs a physical impossibility. When you're running, say, 60, 80 feet in length, and your eggs are only about the size of a cantaloupe, the size difference makes it so hard to be gentle. I think sauropods like Sauroposeidon are just too big to be able to control where their body mass is going to be. Um, you know, they aren't, uh, they don't have the brain capacity to understand where their butt is at the same time as where their head is. With its mammoth size and limited intellect, Sauroposeidon relies on a totally different method than Tyrannosaurus rex to raise its young. In its lifespan, a mated pair of Sauroposeidons might produce thousands and thousands of eggs and only maybe a couple or three are going to survive to adulthood. So what that tells us is that almost all of the offspring are being killed and eaten by predators. Basically, you're flooding all the carnivores with so much food that they can't eat it all, and so there's bound to be some survivors. Soro Poseidon's approach to its young sounds brutish and cruel, but it isn't. 
dinosaur Poseidon, like sea turtles, for example, seems to have tried to overwhelm the predators with just sheer numbers of offspring. They're not just all laying their eggs within a few weeks of each other, they're all trying to lay their eggs on the same night or two. And one of the reasons is that they can overwhelm the predators. Um, if you have a food resource that's available in vast numbers, but only for a very limited time, it's hard for predators to eat all of them. Like sea turtles, who from the moment they hatch, they're on their own. For predators, hatching time is a veritable feast. Even so, the strategy works. Carnivores gulp down virtually every hatchling, but a few do make it. Not even the most voracious feeders can kill them all. Sauropods were in a predator-rich environment, so I'm sure that many, many sauropod nests were found and destroyed by predators before the babies could even hatch. Sauroposeidon's size is its main defense. When it reaches an adult weight of 50 tons, nothing can touch it. But maintaining this massive girth means filling up almost constantly. An adult will eat almost anything that grows. They consume as much as 330,000 calories, almost a ton of greenery every day. To find that much food, herds roam great distances. Even if they had the brain capacity to care for their young, there isn't enough vegetation to let them stay by the nest. How much of your resources do you put into reproduction to producing the next generation? And it's always a trade-off. If you put in a lot of parental care, then you don't have the resources to make lots and lots of babies. Or you can go the other way and make tons and tons of babies, but you won't have the resources left to take very good care of them. Taking care of offspring requires not only brain power, but also well-developed sensors. Soro Poseidon has neither. Its eyes are separated, located on each side of its head, so it has no ability to judge depth. Its small brain has only rudimentary centers of sight and smell. And its hearing is severely limited, as the cochlear duct inside the inner ear is tiny. Sorposidon probably had a brain about the size of a kitten's, because it was not Unfortunately, a very smart animal. It didn't have to be. It was a food processing plant. Soro Poseidon's five senses are little more than a life support system for one of the biggest stomachs ever known. For a hatchling, the situation is even more dire. They lack even the most basic early warning system that danger is present. Herbivores are growing much faster than the carnivores. If they don't grow fast, they get eaten. It will be a decade or more before this Sora Poseidon is big enough to join the herd, and it will spend all those years alone. So where are the smaller animals? What did the sauropods do until they were a third grown? They weren't moving with the herd. They were probably hiding out in the forest, trying to eat as much as they could, get as big as they could, as fast as they could, so that they could join the herd. That's the best defense. It doesn't matter what else you're equipped with, whether you have horns or armor or whatever, the best defense is always to get big. And if you're a sauropod, you've got nothing else. So getting big is the only game in town. But for a Soro Poseidon, every day spent growing up is a day trying to keep out of the sights of this brute. Deinonychus is a killing machine. Here is a creature that was small, it was fast. Deinonychus was, was really one of the most remarkable predators uh, the Earth has seen. A three-dimensional fighter, a kickboxing dinosaur. The weapon that defines Deinonychus is a slashing 10-centimeter razor-sharp blade kept upright during walking or running, constantly cocked ready for a fight. This vicious claw can deliver over 200 kilograms of force and rotate almost 180 degrees. To eviscerate prey, Deinonychus uses both its hands and feet. These were animals that had 
weapons everywhere you go. A ridiculous amount of weaponry for an animal of its size. So clearly this is an animal has evolved for whatever reason to be able to um, dish out a lot of damage for its size. For a young Soro Poseidon, even one the size of a polar bear, Deinonychus is a fearsome opponent. And when there's a pack of these savage killers, a lone Soro Poseidon has little hope of surviving their onslaught. But some do survive and grow up to one day become almost indestructible. For Tyrannosaurus rex, the most advanced carnivore that has ever lived, the odds are even harder. While the T-Rex chicks wait near their nest, the female is far away on a hunt trying to replenish her strength. The male stays behind to guard the roost. There's always this idyllic picture of this female Tyrannosaurus guarding her clutch of eggs. It may have been the male, as far as we know. I mean, the female could have said, buddy, you caused the problem, you take care of them. But the male needs to eat too. A warm-blooded carnivore can't last for long without a meal. A scent travels on the breeze, an aroma his brain instantly recognizes. A dead and rotting Triceratops. It's a tempting proposition for the T-Rex, not least because it can't fight back. There's this debate, uh, was T-Rex a scavenger or a predator? And the answer to that is it was both. Uh, any large animal needs to be able to find food on a regular basis. And these guys were warm-blooded, they needed to eat uh, frequently. But with both parents out searching for food, the nest is left unguarded and exposed. Triceratops may be a plant eater, but with the defenseless baby T-Rex around, it'll make an exception. Quetzalcoatlus is the largest flying carnivore in Earth's history. It eats four to five kilos of flesh every day, nearly the weight of two hatchlings combined. To survive, these chicks will have to keep a very low profile. A Tyrannosaurus rex can pinpoint the exact location of an odor. Soon, he's heading straight for the dead Triceratops. The sense of smell was powerful in T-Rex. The nerve that goes to the sense of smell is the biggest nerve in the dinosaur head. They could probably tell not just if there was a dinosaur that had walked past, they could be able to tell that that dinosaur walked past two and a half hours ago. T-Rex's nose is like a laser guidance system and leads him directly to his target. But what these advanced sensors do not tell him is how this Triceratops died in the first place. The answer to that question is found in the mouth of another T-Rex. This predator's massive jaws, with their bone-crushing teeth able to bite down with enough force to bend steel, hold a hidden danger. It's quite likely that the teeth of carnivorous dinosaurs have rotting meat, little bits of it caught in their teeth, and therefore a lot of bacteria, and therefore an infectious bite. The bacteria would have given T-Rex permanent bad breath. There'd be many reasons you would not want to be around the mouth of a T-Rex, and smell would have been one of them. That bacteria means that any bite that draws blood can cause a life-threatening infection. Even if the animal managed to survive the wounds generated from the bite, the prey dinosaur would get weaker and sicker, and the predator could then hunt it down and kill it. Bitten by a T-Rex and you're done for, be it now or later. And once you're down, Tyrannosaurus Rex will find you and eat you. Unfortunately for this T-Rex, the stench of rotting meat draws a crowd, and while a hungry adult male fights for his share of the spoils, 
His unguarded hatchlings wait for his return, while a Quetzalcoatl circles above. Fifty million years before the first T-Rex walked the Earth, Sauro-Poseidon youngsters are already out on their own. Huge numbers hatch each year, but only three out of 10,000 will survive to adulthood. The most dangerous time is the first few weeks when they're smallest. Their best defense is to get as big as they can as fast as they can. In order to grow very big, very fast, they do something that appears to break the most basic rules of biology. For the first few years, these plant eaters are meat eaters. Probably many of them were eating insects and small animals because it was a ready source of protein. Very many plant-eating animals will also take animal prey when they can get them because it's an important source of nutrients that are really hard to get from plants. A young Soro Poseidon processes food in an entirely different way than an adult, digesting its food in the stomach and small intestine. It's a digestive process more like those of carnivores. And Soro Poseidon has another trick for growing to mammoth proportions, hollow bones. Its backbone, neck and ribs have walls just a few millimeters thick. Even its limbs are far less dense than the bones of many mammals. So look at these big sauropods like Sauro Poseidon. They're growing to 20, 30, 40, 50 tons, and they're doing it in the space of just two or three decades. Sauropods grow in spurts depending on their age, the season, and the availability of food. Scientists know this because their growth is recorded as rings, like rings in a tree trunk. For the first few years of a Soro Poseidon's life, predators are at every turn. One of the most common, Deinonychus, is also one of the most deadly. Cunning, definitely cunning. Big brain, smart. It's the sort of creature that seems very adept for doing a lot of damage in a very short amount of time. Nasty. Uh, Deinonychus is a very, very nasty animal that, that uh, you know, you meet up with one of these and your chances of being disemboweled are pretty great. For something like Deinonychus, Soro Poseidon would be a great meal. For the herbivore Soro Poseidon, death by Deinonychus is violent and painful. It's a kill not unlike today's hyenas, one of the Serengeti's most effective predators. When hyenas bite through the gut of antelope, it just stops. It's functionally dead. While juveniles fight it out in the woodlands, adults or a Poseidon are, as always, foraging for food. With their tiny brains, they live in a world of oblivion, seemingly unaware of the fate of their offspring. Tyrannosaurus rex, though, lives in an entirely different world. A male devours a triceratops carcass. Those powerful jaws smash into the meat of the animal. Those gigantic teeth pierce down through flesh. Uh, these well-rooted teeth are there to break into the bones. Scavenging keeps T-Rex alive. Maintaining strength is essential. His chicks are depending on him. Left alone, they're as vulnerable as a clutch of baby Soro Poseidon. And a Quetzalcoatlus has a voracious appetite. Soaring at 3,000 meters, a sense of smell is useless. This flying reptile relies on its incredible eyesight to scan for vulnerable infants on the ground. It could make the difference between a meal and no meal. It zeroes in on a target. A meter-long baby T-Rex appears on the radar. 
it's going to need to have fairly good distance vision in order to be able to see just generally where it's going and, and targets on the ground. They would have been just about the right size to be a snack for Quetzalcoatlus. Luckily, just as this massive flying reptile approaches the nest, the male senses trouble. His ultra-sensitive olfactory lobes pick up the distinctive scent of Quetzalcoatlus. This triggers a rush of chemicals to the brain and an immediate decision to return to the nest. But Quetzalcoatlus are fast, and it only takes a split second to launch their 180 kilo body into the sky. The other chicks might just make it for another generation. Dinosaurs ruled the Earth for millions of years. They grew to almost unimaginable sizes and adapted to extreme environments all over the globe. These animals were very successful and really uh, some of the crowning achievements of, 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 of evolution. And they do it all without much brain power. Dinosaurs didn't need to solve quadratic equations. They didn't need to play chess. They didn't need to learn how to build rockets that go to the moon. What they needed to do was do the things dinosaurs do. You really only need to be as smart or smarter than the animals that you're around. These are animals that need to respond to threats, be able to guard their young, uh, might need to be um, doting parents in many cases, might need to be able to find distant resources, but they don't necessarily need to comprehend philosophy. The armored dinosaurs in general, and Ankylosaurus is no exception here, were not bright dinosaurs. Probably one of the dumbest dinosaurs that ever lived. Their brains are really small for the size of their heads and their bodies. Dinosaurs had just one job, to successfully operate the advanced machines their bodies have evolved into. And this is a job they do extremely well. They would have seen and smelled and heard the world in ways that far exceed what we're able to do. And in a way, that's a lot of brain power, just a different kind of brain power. For dinosaurs, brain power, carefully honed physical traits, and instinct all worked together. The result, dinosaurs survived for over 165 million years. 800 times longer than we've been on the planet. They were on this planet for more than 100 million years, and you know these guys were very successful, and they only went out because of extraterrestrial causes. It took a meteor to wipe out the dinosaurs, a testament to their incredible staying power. With their magnificent bodies and tiny brains, Dinosaurs were success stories like no other creature the planet has seen before or since, including the human race.